Good evening, and welcome to this streaming broadcast of Rudd, a radio play by Brent Hansen, produced by Southern Virginia University Theater. The play takes place in a small farming community in Idaho during the Great Depression. Now sit back and relax and enjoy this radio performance of Rudd. Let me tell you about some furniture I inherited. I didn't know what to do with it. A battered kitchen table and chairs. The table was marked with scratches and a couple of deep gouges, and one of the chairs had obviously been repaired. This stuff was just old and worn, not at all a valuable antique find. Even a thrift store might not want it. I knew the table and chairs had originally been in the farmhouse kitchen in Idaho, where my great-grandfather, Rudd Chandler, grew up, almost a hundred years ago. I sat down on one of the sturdier-looking chairs and ran my palm across the tabletop. The texture of dents and wear seemed to hold secrets. Secrets of ten thousand meals. Secrets of lives lived. I was startled. The wood felt warm, almost as if it had some inner energy. Okay, weird. <laughs> I stroked the wood again, this time with both hands, and the table spoke to me. Not literally, but trust me when I say I wasn't expecting anything like what I felt. I'd never been to the farm, but I had seen photos. The frame house looked impossibly small. I knew that the austerity of the Great Depression had marked my family's history, like it had so many families of that generation. Rudd was 17 in the fall of 1935. He had just dropped out of high school so he could help his father full-time on the farm. I heard an alarm clock ringing in the early dawn light. Rudd was outside in the yard, washing at the pump. He moved briskly in the cool air. He had the look of a young man who works hard and likes it. Nice muscles, I thought. Someone in the house turned off the alarm. Rudger Chandler, Rudd's father, came into the kitchen from the little curtained alcove where he and his wife, Loretta, had their bed. Rudger lit the lamp that was sitting on the kitchen table my table. Then he went to the bottom of the narrow attic stairs and called up to Rudd. Rudd! It's time! Get up now! Rudd! Short time! Now! I'm outside at the pump. Oh! Well, you're up already. That's a surprise. (laughs) Quite the occasion. Yes, sir. I'll just get started on the chores. Rudger picked up his hat from its hook by the back door and went out to start the chores. Rudd came inside. He stirred the pot on the stove, then went upstairs. Loretta came into the kitchen from the alcove. She spent a quick moment tidying her appearance. She finished preparations for breakfast, which was the cooked cereal already on the stove. She set the table for three and placed the chairs with their backs, not their seats, facing the table. Rudd came downstairs, tucking in his shirt. When he saw his mother, he sneaked quietly behind her and put his hands over her eyes. Guess who? No! Rudd! <laughs> Good morning, mother. Well, did you start the oatmeal? Guilty as charged. Uh, you are unusually chipper for this early in the morning. It looks like it's going to be a mighty pretty day. Oh, it's not nice to glow. <laughs> Shoot, Ma. Let me enjoy my first day of freedom. I can always go back to school when we get the farm back on its feet. Well, what about everything you'll be missing in the meantime? I won't miss much. If, if I went back in three months, Percy Dawson would still be trying to finish the sentence he started last year when he came back from that 
fancy college. Be respectful. He may be your friend, but he is also your teacher. Sorry, ma'am.、Hmm. Mr. Dawson does tend to go on and on, though, and on. Well, Percy didn't quit high school when he was seventeen. No, he didn't. But I feel all caged up sitting in school. I want to work, and Dad needs me. He can't irrigate and weed and harvest ten acres of potatoes alone, not with his. I know it's settled. It's just not what I wanted for you. So don't glow. Well, don't do no good to want things for folks they don't want themselves. No, it doesn't do any good. Right. It don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're willing to help. The more your dad worries, the worse his seizures get. Uh, hand me that pad. Your dad will be here.、Yeah, some milk would sure be good with that mush.、Mm, well, bills have to be paid before there'll be money for a cow. I know. The farm comes first. I ain't complaining. Don't. Especially in front of your dad. Oh, he's coming in. Good morning, Rudger. Good、uh, morning, dear. <laughs> morning, son. Well, sorry, there's no milk. That ain't likely to change real soon. I know. I didn't mean. I'm sorry. It's not. It's no one's fault, and I'm not some little kid. I can do without milk just fine. Well, let's say a prayer so we can eat. Red and his father stood by their chairs while Loretta brought the cereal to the table. Then they all knelt at the turned-out chairs. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our debts. Help us get out of debt. Thanks for making this beautiful land. You know how much I love it. Please, Lord, help us make it prosper. I'm willing to work as hard as I can. Harder. Protect my family, Lord. Help us get through these hard times. You said you care for the fall of the sparrow. Shelter us like that sparrow. Please bless my dad. Bless him that his spells won't come so often. Help me, help him, and please keep our potatoes growing pretty in the field. For thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Prayer over, they all turned their chairs to face the table and started to eat.、Mm. Well, this is about the same stuff I just fed the pig, <laughs> except. Ours is hot and in a clean bowl. Thanks to you, Loretta. Well, it was hot before prayers, and the pig got more. <clears throat> well, well, I ain't complaining. That was a joke. I ain't never left the table hungry, not ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's good that we can laugh about what we don't have. <laughs> it beats crying anyway. <laughs> well, we have food on the shelf. My cannon jars are almost all full. What do you think the weather is going to do, Rudger? Well, that's the question. The farmer's almanac predicts late frost this year. If that holds true, we should have a good harvest. Dad, I know we're really scraping to have enough money to survive. It's a pretty desperate situation right now, and not just for us. Well, what does it look like for us? I mean, you've always kind of protected me, I guess, but I'm here to help you with everything now. Even the worrying. I, I appreciate that. Exactly. Who all do we owe, and how much, and how soon do we have to pay? I have it all written down、uh, here in my notebook. I'll I'll show you. What is it, Rudger?、Uh, oh, it's happening again. Are you again. having? He's、mm. starting to tremble. <clears throat> Don't、Dad. stare at me. I can't stop it. Don't stare. We'll take、uh, care of you. Run.、Mm. Help him to the floor.、Uh, support his head. I know what to do. I will. His eyes rolled up. Oh, but he hasn't stopped shaking.、Mm. That's what wears him out. We just、mm. let it run its course. I hate this. He's so miserable and so embarrassed. He's, he's calming down now. Yeah, I think it's almost over.、Mm. Oh. Oh, this is a bad one. You better go meet Doctor Flynn now. Yes, I can manage. I'll be as fast as I can. Rudd ran out the front door, and Mother sat with Dad, holding him. <laughs> Later that afternoon, Loretta was standing at the bed alcove. I'll close the curtains so you can rest, Rudger.、Oh, thank you, dear. That bright light. I know. 
Rest now, if you can. Outside, Rudd pushed a wheelbarrow filled with corn cobs into the yard. A bundle of columbine blossoms was on top of the corn. Is Dad still resting? Oh, yes. I brought the corn cobs. I can get more if you want. Oh, we'll start with those. I like your corn cob jelly. Well, that's good, since it's what we have. Will you get some jars down from the shelf in the pantry for me? Sure. I brought these columbines for you. I know they're your favorites. They're grown like crazy up by the irrigation oh, ditch. They're beautiful. Uh, you want the small jars? Uh, yeah. And see if you can find an empty quart for the flowers. How many jelly jars do you need? We'll start with one box. The flowers really are beautiful. Thank you. Are you all right? Dad's attacks are hard on you, too. Oh, I'll be fine. <laughs> you think I'd be used to dealing with this, but uh, I'm not. I'm glad you're here. Is Dad getting worse? I know he'll never get better, really, but is he getting worse? I don't know. His attacks aren't usually as violent as this morning. Sometimes he'll just go blank, sitting calmly in his chair. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I can't tell if I'm just noticing what's happening more or if it's worse than it used to be. I don't think it's worse. I hope not, but it takes him longer to get back on his feet after an attack than it used to. I'll do the irrigating tonight. Our midnight irrigation turns are miserable, but Dad doesn't have to get up in the middle of the night this time. It's hard for him to ignore the chores. That's why I'm here. You're a good boy. A good person. Even if I'm not in school? Oh, don't press your luck. <laughs> no, ma'am. I guess if you're going to make corn cob jelly, I'd better get on with the sorting. Rudd sat on the porch and started sorting corn cobs. Before he got much done, Josie and Percy appeared on the road. They were on their way home from school. Josie was pushing her new bicycle. She was red-headed and pretty and about Rudd's age. She seemed to have lots of energy, but with soft edges. Percy, the young teacher, was carrying her books. Hi, Rudd. We missed you at school today. Oh, well, shoot, Percy. That's awful nice of you to say. I don't think I had that much to your class. We just wanted to stop on our way home to check on you. This isn't really on your way home, though, is it? Uh, no. Actually, I came this way hoping to talk to you. Oh? <clears throat> Josie said you were thinking about quitting school. Josie sometimes talks out of turn. I didn't think it was a secret. No, I guess it ain't. It'll be pretty obvious when I'm not there anymore. So it's true. You're leaving school? Permanently? Probably. For now, at least. My dad needs lots of help right now. Well, can't your dad hire someone else to help? Sorry, I'm talking out of turn. Again. Yeah, you are, but... But... Well, you know this isn't the first time ever that you talked out of turn. You have a gift. Rudd, you should uh, really- Look, Rudd, I didn't come to offend. Can I bring some books by? So you can keep up until you can come back to class. I guess so. I mean, sure, thanks. I don't know how much time I'll have, but bring them by. I will. Tomorrow, then. Shall we get going back to town, Josie? Look, you- Go ahead. I can wait for you. No! Go ahead. Will you please, Percy? If that's what you want. Shall I drop your books at your house? Uh, no, I'll take them. Okay. I'll see you in class tomorrow. See you, Percy. Percy? What happened to Mr. Dawson? You call him Percy. I'm not in school anymore, <laughs> and I've known him forever. He's what, three years older than us? I think I can call him Percy outside of class. That's nice. What is wrong with you? I thought we were friends. What do you mean? We are friends. A friend doesn't drag the school teacher out here the first chance she gets. When I told you I might have to quit school, that was supposed to be private. You just said it couldn't be a secret. Make up your mind. And what do you mean, the school teacher? Percy was your best friend long before you knew my name. He would have been checking on you without any help from me. Yeah, well... What was that crack about my dad hiring someone to help him? Hired hands don't work for free, and everybody in town knows we can't pay our bills. We haven't paid your father, I guess you know that, all right. We owe even more now, because I had to fetch him again this morning. <laughs> Look, nobody in this town pays their doctor bills, except 
once in a while by giving us a chicken that died of starvation. Well, you don't seem to be going without too much. I haven't seen that bicycle before, have I? It looks brand new. I guess since you all are so poor, you must have stolen it. Now who's talking out of turn? Damn you, Rudd Chandler, I shouldn't have bothered coming here. Don't swear at me. Mm, you could start an argument in an empty room. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I hate your holier-than-thou smugness. I don't see your special Miss Prissy Church friend Fern here fighting to keep you in school. Fern isn't my special anything. I don't even like her. I like you. Shoot. Thanks. I guess. Mm. So, uh, what are you doing with the corn cobs? Feeding the pigs? Pig. <laughs> Just one. But no, Mom is going to boil them down and make jelly. Corn cob jelly. I'd like to taste it. Maybe I can when it's done. Sure. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry. I'm a little touchy right now. I shouldn't have taken it out on you. Was it your father again? This morning when you needed my dad. Yeah. Another one of his spells. It really rattled him. He's in bed, worn out. He just can't keep up the farm when he's in bed half the time. I see. So, tell me about your bicycle. Can you ride it? <laughs> of course I can ride it. I wouldn't push it back and forth to school just to show off the paint. Wanna try it? Sure. Well, here, take it. Uh, I've never ridden a bicycle. <laughs> It'll be easy for you. Go ahead. Okay. You want to try, but you're afraid. What? I ain't. You really want to ride, but you're afraid of falling down, especially in front of me. Now who's being smug? So, you aren't afraid? Of course not. Wouldn't tell if I was. <laughs> well, here then. Get on. I'll help. Feet on the pedals, hands on the handlebar. Like this? Yeah, now push it down on the pedals. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. Try again. Okay. Hands, mm -hmm. feet, push down on the pedals, and down <laughs> again. Shoot, this is harder than it looks. Tell me the secret. <laughs> How do you balance? Well, if you stand still, you fall. <laughs> you have to keep moving to get your balance. Try again, I'll walk by you. Okay. Hey, <laughs> I'm moving. I'm pedaling. Oh, don't let go. You're okay, I'm right by you. I think I'm getting the idea. <laughs> Look, I can do this. Push down, push down. <laughs> Look out! Oh. <laughs> That was bad. I didn't mean to knock you over. Are you okay? Am I smashing you? I feel okay. Um, should we get up? Um, maybe not. I, uh, I think I maybe want to kiss you. Do you mind? I kissed you. Wow. Oh, I should have waited for you to say yes. Uh, sorry. What are you... And I kiss you. Now we're even. Oh boy. That was... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me help you up. <laughs> was I too forward? Am I the first girl you ever kissed? That's a pretty personal question. Well, kissing is pretty personal. I am entitled to ask questions. Am I the first boy you ever kissed? So far. Oh. <laughs> Do you have a long list of prospects? Oh, yes, a long list. And I can check your name off now. <laughs> <laughs> so, one kiss is all? Well, two. We kissed twice. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> you did, I did. No, nope, we did. I'll shut up. Good idea. Well, that was fun. I mean, riding the bike was fun. Thank you. Kissing was fun. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rudd shook his head with happy confusion. 
He brushed himself off and gave Josie the bicycle. He watched Josie pedal away, obviously and totally infatuated. It was later, in the middle of the night. Rudd and his father were at the irrigation ditch, diverting water to the potatoes. I saw Rudd kneeling on the ground, putting a gate into position. The moonlight was bright, and it looked cold. <sighs> 4 a.m. We're right on schedule. One more gate. Now, this is the last time we irrigate this crop. <laughs> it's almost time to start walking to the top gate. Why don't you go on back to bed and let me finish? Now, relax. Now, set a minute. Ugh. Now, it's okay to rest. It is. Uh, yesterday, you were asking me about the farm and money. I didn't mean to upset you. But not your fault. And you're right. You need to know what we're up against. Here's the account book. Uh, you can see we owe, well, about everybody. It's almost $300. Is that right? I'm afraid so. Shoot. That's a lot of money. We've always lived from harvest to harvest. But we've been able to clear up our bills every fall after we sell the potatoes. I'm worried about the prices this year. What happens if we can't pay off the bills? That's not really a choice. When we sign for things at the co-op or the mercantile, we're promising to pay. We can't break that promise. Does Mother know how bad things are? Oh, yes. And we don't have secrets. Well, how much money do we have right now? None. Well, that's why the potatoes are so important. We need a good crop. The next weeding counts, and we have to hope there isn't a frost before it's time to harvest. Is there any way besides the potatoes to earn some money? There's plenty of good paying work with the logging crews right now. I've never done any logging, but I could learn. I wasn't thinking about for you. I could maybe take the job for a few months. I don't know what Mother would think about that. Maybe I should be the one to get another job. <laughs> well, you're willing. I'll give you that. Do you want me to finish tending the water now? Uh, you need sleep, too. Uh, you can't work day and night, even if you're not in school. I could have done the irrigating by myself. Yes, sir, I know, but I can take my turn, especially when you're... I can tend a little water, or pull my end of a two-man saw, for that matter. Of course, but I don't... Don't worry about me. How do you feel? <sighs> you're worse than your mother. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, don't be twisting my meaning. That wasn't no compliment. <laughs> no, sir, but Mother's pretty near perfect. I don't <laughs> mind being bad like her. I wonder how a guy like you or me ends up with someone so nice. Hmm. Well, I already ended up, so maybe the wondering ought to be about yourself. How did you... Uh, how did I what? You know, how did you get Mother to like you? Well, never thought about it. I guess I'm just naturally likable. Aren't you? Dad, I'm serious. I heard Dr. Krebs' daughter was here yesterday afternoon. You and Mother tell each other everything, don't you? Well, do these questions have something to do with Josie, or are you just asking to pass the time? Maybe. She is very... Then sometimes she makes me... I feel like... Shoot, how do you trust someone else's feelings? I... Don't even trust my own. I ain't much good at explaining things. Oh. Yeah, but I'll try. Uh, let me think a minute. Hmm. Hmm. Water runs down the rows to the potatoes. Yeah. Why does the water go to the potatoes? Well, because we opened the gate. That's kind of like that. Your heart has a gate. You have to dare to open it to let your feelings out. That's pretty risky. If there were no risks, why would you need trust? You know, water doesn't get to the potatoes unless we open the gate. You have to let your feelings out. You just have to do it. I... Whoa. What if she doesn't feel the same way? Then she doesn't. You have to take some risks to find out. Either way it turns out, you win. How so? She might want different things in life than you. If she's not the one, you'll get over it and move on. At least you'll know. So you still come out ahead. 
I guess. You can't force someone to love you. Is that what we're talking about? But love? And that's what I'm talking about. When I watch you and Mom, I feel good and proud. You understand each other, sometimes without even talking. She's everything. She deserves acres more than I've given her. She doesn't think that. I know. Well, that makes it even more true. I hope someone will know me like that. Don't rush it. Give it time. Time. <laughs> time is up on this irrigation turn. Oh, we'd better get back to work. Uh, I stood up a too fast. I'm a little shaky on my feet. Maybe I will go back to the house. Are you sure you can finish alone? I can. Thanks, Dad. See you at breakfast. Uh, uh, can I hug you? Don't get all sloppy. I'm letting feelings flow. <laughs> of course you can hug me. That afternoon, Mother was wiping jars of the freshly made corncob jelly. Dad came into the kitchen from the alcove, where he had been resting. You ready for help putting those jars away, Loretta? Oh, I'll do it. You sit and have a sample. Well, don't mind if I do. <sighs> sure smelled good cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you smelled anything. Mm -hmm. I thought you were sleeping. Here's a slice of bread. Now let's share. Oh, well, thank you. I had an interesting talk with Rudd last night while we were irrigating. He's quite taken with Josie Krebs. Oh, they are both so young. Too young. Well, about the same age we were when we got married. That's true, but I hope Rudd doesn't get hurt. He commits quickly. I know. And once he commits, he doesn't change easily. He could be headed for <laughs> some heartache. I hope not. <sighs> Well, I better get this jelly put away in the pantry. Well, let me reach the top shelf for you, dear. Well, I can reach I... it with the chair. Oh, wait, Loretta, I wish you would... Oh! Oh! Rutger! Loretta! Loretta? No! Oh. No! No! Rod! Rod, help! Uh, help, Rod! What is it? What happened? Her neck. Why she... is she... Oh, she, she, Rod, quick, run for Dr. Krebs. A few days later, I saw Rudd, Josie, and Percy slowly approaching the house from the road. They were followed by Dr. Krebs and Rudger. They were all dressed in Sunday clothes. Dr. Krebs and Rudger went into the kitchen and sat at the table. It was a nice service. Thanks for your support today, Dr. Krebs. You'll get through this. I'm not sure how, but you will. Jelly. What? Jelly. Where are you going with the jelly? I'm getting rid of it. I can't stand to look at it. Don't take it. It's the last thing she did for us. Don't take it. Well, don't take it, too, you mean. Look, I know it's my fault. It's all my fault. If I hadn't let her climb up on that chair, if I hadn't blacked out when I should have been helping her, if, 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 if... No, if Dad, I would have... it wasn't your fault. It wasn't nobody's fault. It just happened. Where are you going? Rod, let him go. Percy and I will follow and make sure he's all right. Percy, come with me. Yes, sir. Dr. Krebs and Percy followed after Rudger. Red and Josie were left on the porch. Red sat down, cradling the jelly jars. Thanks for coming today, Josie. I've never been to a funeral before. It was strange. What do you mean? All that talk about God calling your mother home. Uh, that didn't bother me. This is her home. Yeah. Did it help? <laughs> Did it make you feel better? I don't feel great, but... Yeah, I think I feel better. Some. I know we sit in church every Sunday, but I'm not sure I believe all of it. I don't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> this is backwards. I'm supposed to comfort you. I guess I do believe. Do you think I'm just simple-minded? No. Not ever. 
There's nothing simple about believing. I think God's looking out for my mother. Where was he three days ago? I don't know. He was there someplace. If he wasn't, then... No. I have to think he was there. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. I don't think anyone is looking out for my mother. Is she still in Denver? <laughs> oh, sure. We tell everyone she's in Denver because that's where she was the last time she sent us a letter. The problem is, <laughs> that was over two years ago. I didn't know. It's amazing how creative and evasive you can be when you're too embarrassed to admit that your own mother has deserted you. Hey, you don't have to talk about this. Why would she leave? I keep wondering what I did wrong. Why would it be your fault? Dad says I look just like her. I'm afraid I'll act just like her, too. Do you think children turn out like their parents? You can't choose whether to have red hair and be beautiful or not. You're stuck with that. But you've got to choose the way you act. No one else can do that for you. I know that. One of the girls at school likes to make wisecracks about my mother. I shouldn't have let her see that it bothers me, and I don't know whether to smack her or hang my head in shame. Who does that to you? It doesn't matter who. It's my problem. I'd like to call my mother home, but I don't know where to find her. And if God calls her home, I'm pretty sure she won't end up in heaven with your mother. Well, who knows? I shouldn't complain. My dad is the dearest, sweetest man, and we take care of ourselves just fine. Yeah. I miss her, though. Yeah. Maybe she wanted too much. What do you mean? I can't exactly explain it. Sometimes I just want something big. Like what? I don't know. Something bigger, to be something important, or even to be somewhere important. Maybe that's how she felt. Something bigger? I don't get it. You think I'm beautiful? What? You said I couldn't help having red hair and being beautiful. I never thought those two things went together very well. Oh, they do. You can trust me on that. <laughs> I'm gonna miss my mother. I can't imagine that I'll stop missing her, but maybe I can get used to missing her. Maybe. I don't know. Can... Can I hold your hand? Sure. A week dragged painfully by. The alarm clock rang, and then stopped. Rudger stumbled out of the alcove. Rud, it's time! Get up! Rud, chore time! Coming. Dad put on his hat and jacket and went out the back door. Rudd came down the stairs. His actions were automatic. He finished dressing and went about his morning tasks, which were simpler than before. He went to the pump for water, but didn't wash. He set out cold biscuits on the table. He hesitated, then turned the chairs out for prayer. Dad came back in. He dropped his hat on the table and looked uncertainly at the turned-out chairs. Well, let's kneel down and say prayer so we can eat. Our Father, which art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I don't understand anything. I need some... Lord, I can't live in this house without Loretta. Please bless my dad. Help him get well in his head and... I don't know what to pray for now that I can never have the only thing that matters. Help us help each other through this hard time. Please bless Rudd. Help him understand what I'm going to do. What I have to do. Just help. Please. Please. I'm in.
Dad. Rod. Oh. Go ahead. Are you going to take the job? We have to hang on to the land. I know. Once the rest is cleared, you'll have a beautiful farm. We'll have a beautiful farm. I can't get the potatoes out of the ground by myself, let alone clear another 30 acres. How are we going to do that if you're not here? You'll be surprised how much you can do. You're going to take the job. You're going to leave. The job is sure money. The potatoes are still a gamble. The weather is a gamble. God won't let us down, Willie. I don't think so, but... We don't get to tell God what miracles to give us. But, Dad, all I, I want... I can't guess what God will do. He apparently doesn't view things exactly the way I do. No surprise, I suppose. Do you still trust him? I keep praying, but... Well, we have to do our part. How hard are you willing to work to keep the farm? You know I ain't afraid of hard work. This is home. I'd do about anything. So would I. Even join a logging crew. I ain't afraid of hard work either. What about your blacking out? Will they hire you? I'm fine! They hired me. Oh. You didn't tell them. How long will you be gone? Long enough to earn money to get the bills paid. Not so long. Let me go instead of you. No! Logging camps are pretty rough places. I, I don't think your mother would want you to go. You think she'd want you to go? I want you to take care of things here, Rudd. Yes, sir. I'll do what you say for you, for the farm, for the home. Can it still be home without your mother? It still is. It has to be. It's home. This table, this door, a home. This gate, this pump, this dirt, home. Look, Dad, this sky. Dad, this is where we're us. Home. I just feel numb. I need you. Give me time. Mom would want you. Don't! A couple of days later, Percy and Josie rode up to the house on their bicycles. Percy's attentiveness to Josie was obvious to me. He held her bike as she dismounted, and it looked like he enjoyed having his hand on her back. Thank you, Percy. You're... Always a gentleman. My pleasure. <laughs> I wonder where Rudd is. He must be here. He never goes any place. I'll check the house. Rudd? Rudd? You have company? Maybe he's out back or in the barn. Should we go look? Uh, let's wait a few minutes. I don't want to be too snoopy. Shall we sit on the porch? I guess there are rules about how close to one of his students the school teacher can sit. Not rules exactly. I have to be careful, though, and I would never want to make you uncomfortable. You don't. I hope you know that. You'll finish school this year? Maybe? Well... Do you plan to keep teaching here? Is this the life you imagined for yourself? I honestly don't know. I just kind of fell into teaching. <laughs> what about you? There's a great big world out there, and you could do anything you set your mind to. You think so? Absolutely. You really believe that? Think big. Imagine big. Be a, a doctor like your father. <laughs> or maybe a teacher like you. I might be good at that. I'd like to go to college. Go for whatever interests you. You can do it. <laughs> that, that really means a lot to me. Thanks. Josie reached her hand to Percy's cheek. Hmm, your cheek feels soft and scratchy at the same time. That's strange. Oh, here's Rudd! Looks like I'm interrupting. Uh, no! What are you doing here? For maybe I should ask why you are doing what you are doing here. We're just waiting for you. Hmm. Crossing another name off your list, Josie? No. None of my business, really. It's not. 
What am I missing here? You two get lost on your way home from school again? We're not pretending this time. We came to check up on you. Josie thought we should. I did too. How are you doing? Just fine. Thanks. You two had not a gaudy way to see me. <laughs> it's not a problem, especially with bicycles. Mm. Nice that you both have bikes. We missed you at church yesterday, Rod. I overslept. <laughs> I was afraid maybe you had lost your faith. But... I don't know what happened. I just slept through the alarm. I'll be there next Sunday. You could sit with my dad and me. And Percy? Sure, I'll be there. Oh, great. It's no wonder you overslept. You're doing the work of two people. You can't keep up this pace. You look exhausted. I'm afraid you're going to make yourself sick. I don't have time to get sick. And I'm sorry I don't look good. I didn't mean that. I'm doing all right. Just fine. I thought Thanks we had... Thanks for stopping by. It was your pleasure. Goodbye. Josie, I'll catch up in a minute. What's wrong with her? Are you serious? What's wrong with you? I... I think she's a little offended. She's having a hard time right now, and you're not helping. Hard time? What do you mean? I don't know. She ran out of class crying yesterday and didn't come back. I think she had a disagreement with one of the other girls. Crying and running away? That doesn't sound like Josie. Maybe, but that's what happened. She can be a little unpredictable. She doesn't want to talk about it, so who knows? Anyway, we both just want to help. I don't need... Before you throw me off the property to... Listen, I'm getting fat sitting in school all day. If I come by sometimes in the evenings and on Saturday, can you put me to work? I'm no great farmer, but I'm willing to learn. Is that what she thought? That I threw her off the farm? I'd never throw anyone... You just did. Mm. Nothing seems to be working out that well. Oh, boo-hoo. Uh, thanks for the understanding. Maybe I do understand. Josie is amazing. Anyone can see that. I don't have anything to offer her. You do. I like her. I noticed. Do you two have an understanding I should know about? No, not really, but... What? I don't know. Well, let me know if that changes. Yeah, I will. Then I can't let you work and not pay you. I won't take charity. Well, I'll show up. You'll have to put me to work or chase me off. I want to help. It's called friendship. Okay. I can use the help. Not settled then. Can I sit down for a minute? Sure. I wouldn't mind sitting down myself. Have you heard from your dad? No, but that doesn't surprise me. He hasn't been gone a week yet. The newspaper says this could be a record year for potatoes. Our crop looks good. Shoot, the fields are downright gorgeous. You really love this place. Yeah. I don't get it. I mean, no offense, but it isn't... Well... <laughs> what? Thriving? No, if you think about it, it's just 40 acres of dirt. Well, there is a house and a barn and a shed, but mostly a farm is dirt. So why are you willing to kill yourself working for dirt? It's a miracle. Things grow in it. New life that wasn't there before. With dirt and water and sunshine, I can make life happen. What could be bigger or better than that? It's like... Being partners with God. I'm hoping he's satisfied with the partnership, at least $300 worth. <laughs> so I'll get to keep using his dirt. I'm counting on that. Dirt and miracles, huh? And partners with God. I guess it'll be an honor for me to help. You sure know how to bamboozle the free labor. <laughs> I'm sorry about earlier. I'm not any good at being alone. Makes me feel low, like a snake in a wagon rut. You owe Josie an apology, too. I know. Good. I'll see you. Okay. See ya. A couple of days later, Rudd was sitting at the table, eating his dinner by lamplight. 
Dr. Krebs, Josie, and Percy appeared on the road. They were walking somberly. Dr. Krebs was carrying Rutger's hat. Dr. Krebs, come in. That's Dad's hat. Let's sit down. What? It was an accident. Your dad was fastening the chain on a load of logs. I think he must have blacked out. The foreman said it happened so fast no one could do anything. I don't understand. I don't believe it. I don't know what to say. Why? I don't know. No reason. That's not good enough. Dad, too? How can that be fair? What about the farm? What about me? From the sounds of it, your dad would not have felt any pain. No pain. I hurt. I'm sorry, Rudd. I don't know what to say. Me neither. When did it happen? Thursday. Last week. Almost a week. I didn't know. They were working pretty far up the mountain. A man from the logging company brought the news and your dad's things. He was supposed to come out and tell you himself, but I thought we should do it. Bad news from a stranger. A funeral. I mean, is the body... They had to bury him there. Oh. I guess there was no way. No. It's too far to send a body, even in cool weather. Of course. It's just strange. Wrong. Uh, The burial costs. Who do I owe? No one. Your dad had earned a little money, and the company made up the difference. I wish things were different. I wish everything was different. Was anyone else hurt? No. No. That's good. He didn't tell them about his seizures. I figured that. They wouldn't have hired him if he had. Well, is there anything else? What do you mean? Anything else to tell? Nothing to tell. I need to ask you something, though. What? Do you feel all right? Well, I don't feel really wonderful. What do you mean? Percy, Josie, excuse us for a minute, will you? What is it? There isn't an easy way to approach this, so I'm just going to plow ahead. All right. I'm worried about you. Your safety. Have you ever had blackouts like your father's? No. Not ever? No. Why? We think this condition runs in families. Runs in families? That could mean you have the same problem. I know what it means. People are more prone to have seizures when they're young. If you haven't had any problems by now, you probably won't. Probably. Your father could tell when an attack was coming on. Have you ever had an experience like that? Felt or smelled something strange, something that wasn't there? No. You shouldn't worry then. Chances are you'll never be bothered. Chances are. Right. But it runs in families. We think so. So if I have children, it could happen to them. Well... Anything is possible, but we really don't know that much about it, but I wouldn't worry. You wouldn't? I don't believe that. I only wanted to make sure you weren't having problems now. I've just lost both of my parents. And my children. How's that for problems? I... You can cope, Rod. You'll have to. Percy, Josie, you can come back in. If there's anything we can do... I don't know what it would be. I want you to come and stay at my house tonight. My Thanks, Percy, but I really need some time alone now. We can... No. Would you all mind just... leave? I just need to be alone. I need to figure out being alone. Well, we could... Please. If I need anything, I know you're there. I'll see you to the gate. Well... As you wish. Goodbye, everyone. Good night, then. Goodbye. Goodbye, Rudd. Can I... No. Don't. I can't touch you. I'm not... I can't. I'm sorry. I'll always remember that you were here tonight, Josie. Thanks. Goodbye. Rudd watched everyone walk out of sight. Then he went inside picked up his father's hat from the table, and held it close. You can cope, Rudd. You'll have to. 
You can cope. Can I? Is this how this room will always feel? Empty? I didn't know that I was counting on my children being at this table. Praying at this table. Empty. Empty house. Empty life. What's the point? What is there to pray for once you see your dream and know you can never have it? <sighs> I don't know how, but I have to cope. I'll have to figure it out. Heavenly Father, are you there? A few days later, Rudd, Percy, and Josie were working in the yard. Percy and Josie were bundling burlap sacks, and Rudd was sharpening tools. That's finished. Is that all? It's all for today. This makes four afternoons in a row that you've come to help. You two can't seem to get enough punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a few things. Yeah, you're probably a better student here than I was at school. Who would have thought? Uh, what about you, Josie? <laughs> Honestly, I realize that I've never actually worked before. I've mostly liked it, but does the work ever end here? <laughs> Not really. When you think you're done, it's time to start all over again. <sighs> Not much scope for a... I don't know. Do you feel boxed in? I never thought of it that way. It's all in your perspective, I guess. Do you think there will be a frost tonight, Rudd? Well, I'm watching the weather carefully, and my dad swears, or swore, by the farmer's almanac. The weather is never a sure thing. Farming is never a sure thing. But you work so hard. I like the work. And leaving the potatoes in the ground as long as possible will bring me top dollar for the crop. But you're never sure? It's a gamble. That's a lot of stress. Mr. Peterson on the other side of town always says that he loves farming, and if you gave him a million dollars, he'd just farm till it was gone. <laughs> it makes it sound hopeless. That's farmer's humor. Well, don't look so discouraged, Josie. I won't lose a million dollars. <laughs> it's not hopeless. Petersons do all right. I hear he bought a new tractor. I'll stick with my team for now. I can grow hay, but I can't grow gasoline, and my mare can have foals. <laughs> Haven't figured out a way for tractors to have baby tractors yet. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good arguments against progress. I'm pretty sure we won't get a hard enough frost in the next few days for it to matter. How do you know when to actually start harvesting? It's time now. The plants have started to turn yellow and wilt. I'll start tomorrow by cutting off the vines. That'll take me a couple of days. Can we help? I have equipment for trimming the vines, but I could use help Saturday. Dad bought a mechanical potato digger a few years ago. He digs and sifts the potatoes, and then they roll out the back of the rig. I'll be driving the team, so I need hands to load sacks as the potatoes come out. <laughs> I'll be here. So will I. How um, long will it take? Dad and I could harvest our ten acres in two days. I really hope we can do as well, because the weather could get dicey next week. We'll be back Saturday. Thank you. See you then. See you then. Josie and Percy went on their way. Rudd finished picking up the work mess. He noticed that Josie left her coat on the porch. He folded it carefully and took it inside. He took his money can from its hiding place in the pantry dumped the coins out on the table, and started stacking them. While Rudd was counting, Josie came back. She poked her head in the door. Can I come in? Oh, sure. Uh, come in? I left my coat. Here it is. Thank you. Uh, would you like to sit down? I would. Where's Percy? I told him to go ahead. I was just... Counting up. I see. I don't know why. I made $3.70 selling eggs. 
370 out of 300. I haven't put any other money in, so I'm pretty sure the amount hasn't changed. <laughs> that counting is mainly self-torture. Well, be patient. You'll be selling potatoes before you know it. <laughs> Percy appeared and approached the open door, unfortunately in time to overhear the next exchange. You and Percy have been really kind. I wouldn't even be close without your help. You don't owe me anything. You and Percy make a great team. Well, Percy and I are friends, but we're not a team exactly. Ah, Percy's a little bashful, but I'm sure he really likes you. <laughs> He'll speak up soon, I bet. Is that what you think? Percy's not interested in me that way. I thought... Well, are you sure Percy sees it that way? He's a true friend, but he needs someone a little older than me. Don't you think? Percy quietly walked away. I don't know. Shoot, I'm more stupid some days than others. <laughs> I must have fallen out of the stupid tree and hit my head on every branch on the way down. I, I got the wrong signals. I mean, there will be plenty of other guys who... I mean, when you're ready to get serious with someone and think about marriage... <sighs> Maybe I'd better shut up. <laughs> and what about you, when... You want to get serious with someone and think about marriage. Me? I'll never get married. You don't mean that. Before you know it, you'll be settled with a wife and a house full of children. Children? I bet they'll all be stubborn, just like you. <laughs> right. I won't have children. It would be a sin to pass on my bad traits to some innocent child. Don't say that. I'd be proud to have sons like you. Nah. Just like you. Oh. No. You need someone smart and polished uh, who will take you big places and, and someone not like me. I think I can decide for myself what I need. Maybe, but I'll never get married. I can't. It's not you. What is it then? Money? I wouldn't care about that. I know. I know you better than that now. Don't do this, Josie. It hurts too much. Trust me, it will be easier for you if we don't go down this road. <sighs> too late. Way too late. Easier for me, too. I guess there are two of us who got signals wrong. I'd better go. Your coat. <laughs> Let's forget this conversation ever happened, all right? I think that would be best. Josie left, out the door and through the gate where she picked up her bicycle. But then, instead of riding away, she stood in thought. Inside, Rudd put his hands on the back of the chair where Josie had been sitting. That was the right thing to do. I had to do it. He didn't ever promise me anything. Sure don't feel right doesn't feel right. We kissed once. Twice. And held hands once. The house doesn't feel empty when she's here. I wish. What's wrong, Rudd? Why don't you believe in yourself? The next morning before school, Percy rode up to the house on his bicycle. Rod! 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 Uh, here I am. What do you need? School starts in a half hour, so I only have a few minutes. Oh, I picked up your mail. Sure. Thanks. Josie told me that she won't be helping out. Guess I'm not surprised. She probably won't ever come back. What happened? Did she ask you to talk to me? No, she's as pig-headed proud as you. <laughs> that sounds like her, all right. So, what happened? Kinda private. I'm kinda nosy. Can't argue with that. She was always with you. I thought you were, well, more than friends, but I guess I didn't understand what was happening. Am I getting mixed up again? No, you're the one she's interested in. I found that out. <laughs> yeah. So she finally told you how she feels. What did you do? Reject her? This is pretty personal. So what? I like her a lot. I don't want to hurt her, but I can't ever let myself love her, or anyone else for that matter, ever. Chastity, I applaud. 
but celibacy forever seems wrong-headed. What happened to all of your reverence for making life happen? This is a farm, not a monastery. What are you thinking? You did hurt her. Dr. Krebs told me that my dad's illness runs in families. Do you think he let me marry his daughter? I couldn't do that to anyone, and especially not to Josie. I hurt her, I know, but that hurt won't last forever. Giving a mother children who fall on the floor in fits, that is a hurt I won't be responsible for. I didn't know. Yeah. I judged without knowing all the facts. Celibacy forever. Thanks for reminding me of that. Not what I had planned. We can form a club. <laughs> I'll never know what I'm missing, I guess. So you're just giving up? You know I don't give up easily, but I don't see a solution. There isn't a way out of this. I hope you're not making the same mistake I made. What's that? Judging without all the facts. It seems to me that you're making a lot of assumptions. You may marry and never have children. Or if you did, what are the chances that you would have a child Any with- Any chance is too much. I won't gamble with Josie's happiness. She deserves the best. I don't think anyone has guaranteed happiness, no matter what. You didn't tell her how you feel or any of the rest? Of course not. If she knew how I feel about her, she would just say that she didn't care about anything else. It would be unfair to put her in that position. I don't agree. That's her choice. What's unfair is you making it for her. You should tell her everything. <laughs> don't be such a chicken. <laughs> Let feelings flow. What? Oh, nothing. Something my dad told me once. I'm just... Not sure it applies now. Anyway, I'm only 17. I just dropped out of my last year of high school, and all I have is a bunch of debts and a farm that I might not be able to handle. I've got nothing, nothing to offer, even without the impossible disadvantage of a disease that runs in families. Oh, uh, talk to her! People don't usually go to bachelor school teachers for advice on romance. No, they go to their friends. Tell. Her. Everything. I won't settle for Josie's pity. I've gotta go. I'll be late for school. We'll talk about this again. <laughs> Not if I can help it. But thanks for the mail and thanks for checking on me. Always happy to be nosy. <laughs> Bye. Rudd watched Percy leave. Then he picked up a shovel and a toolbox and sat on the stump by the pump. He used a file to sharpen the shovel blade. After a few moments, he went to the kitchen to get an apple. When he walked back to the door, Josie was approaching the gate. For a moment, I thought Rudd might hide, but then he decided to face the situation. Shoot! Josie! Rudd! Um, would you like to share my apple? Okay. Come in. Have some apple. Tart. Uh, want some more? Not really. You going to school today? No. For what? what? Oh, go ahead. Polite as usual. I wasn't all that polite last time you were here. I'm sorry. What are we doing here? <laughs> well, you live here. The question is, what am I doing here? Josie took her coat off and put it on the back of the chair. Rudd looked at it nervously. Josie walked around the kitchen and looked into the pantry. Is this where your mother fell? Yes. Does it bother you to be here alone? Is this kitchen a constant, unhappy reminder? I mean, the house isn't haunted or anything, is it? <laughs> Only by love. What are you doing, Josie? I was stressed when I left last time. I ran away. Sometimes I do that. I don't know why. I don't blame you. And I was hurt. Really hurt. I hate myself for the things I said to you, but I had to. What aren't you telling me? Trust me. I do, but I can't tell you. Did you rob a bank? Do you have three wives hidden around the county? <laughs> 
I didn't think so. What is it? Are you actually a werewolf? No. I'm just a guy with nothing to offer. Worse, nothing but liabilities to offer. I know you might lose the farm. I don't care. Do you think I'm that shallow? You certainly deserve a better life than I can give you, but it's not the farm. I love you. Don't! My father's seizures run in the family. I could have seizures. If I have children, they could have seizures. Who told you that? Your father. Oh. I won't put any wife through that. I especially won't put you through that. I love you too much. Or not enough. Too much. I love you. You are extremely stubborn, Rudd Chandler. But you are even more wrong at the moment than you are stubborn, and that makes you very, very, very wrong. Terribly wrong. Don't spare my feelings. <laughs> oh, I won't! You didn't spare mine. Tell me this. Did your mother know about your dad's seizures before they got married? I don't know for sure, but I know they didn't ever keep secrets. And yet your mother married him anyway. Did she regret it? When your dad had a seizure, did she ever say that she would have been better off with someone else? Someone without liabilities, as you say. Of course not. She loved him no matter what. Did either your mother or father ever say they shouldn't have risked having children? No. Are you a big mistake that they regretted? No, they loved me. No matter what. What if you had a seizure? They wouldn't have cared. Would your mother have blamed your father for passing on something bad to you? No, they loved each other no matter what. They loved me no matter what, I'm sure. Really? What if you robbed a bank or had three wives hidden around the county? <laughs> no. They'd chew me up one side and down the other, but they'd love me even then. They'd visit me in jail. <laughs> I believe they would. You're lucky. I don't think you know how lucky. I've been wrong. Terribly wrong. Stupidly wrong. If I ever had a smart idea, it would die of loneliness. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree. My dad told me that I had to dare to trust, but I chickened out, thinking it was noble. No more secrets, okay? No more secrets. No more secrets. I promise. Are you leaving? Isn't there more... What? Well, I mean, now that... Now that we talked about... I've done the heavy lifting here, Rudd. I swallowed my pride and came to you, and I talked you out of your pig-headedness. I told you I love you. Oh, where do we go from here? <laughs> I'm not sure. I... I think I am. Josie Krebs, I love you no matter what. Will you marry me? <sighs> uh, that's not what... I, I don't know if I have what it takes to be a farmer's wife. You do. You can do anything you want. We both can't say that we love each other and then not take the next step. That doesn't make sense. I do love you. Say yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'll marry you. <laughs> Wonderful. The main how soon? <laughs> well, let me catch my breath. <laughs> next week would be good, don't you think? I mean, the harvest will be over. That's really soon. I don't want to wait. Why wait now that we've decided? How about Friday? But tell me what you think. <laughs> I'm not interested in waiting either. Can you really be through with the harvest by Friday of next week? I have to be done by then if the weather forecast is to be believed. Would you have something else to do that night? <laughs> no, come to think of it, I don't. <laughs> so? <laughs> it's a date. I'll take care of the wedding. We'll keep things really simple. and You take care of the harvest. Sure. I don't want to rush you. Sure you do, but I'm sure. Perfect. Hey, I think a kiss or two, or a few, <laughs> would be a good idea at this point, don't you? Perfect. Rudd dragged into the yard with a load of tools in his wheelbarrow. He had a lantern tied to the wheelbarrow. He had worked into the darkness. He was dismayed to see Dr. Krebs waiting on the porch. Shoot. Hello, Rudd. Hello, sir. Josie tells me you and she are getting married. It seems you forgot to ask my permission. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I didn't forget exactly. I still need to do that. The expected approach is for you to get my permission before proposing marriage to my daughter. 
not after. Well, I didn't plan to- Josie isn't 18 yet. She can't get married without my approval. It's called the age of consent. It's the law. Did you know that? I want your consent no matter the law, sir. No matter how old we are. Will you allow me to have Josie's hand in marriage, sir? Get up, boy. You aren't proposing to me. What do you want me to do? Let's discuss your prospects. Can we go inside? Uh, yes, sir. Please, come in. I like you, Rod. Josie likes you. Probably even loves you. I love her. I want her to be happy. Not any more than I do. Is this about the seizures? I wouldn't blame you if it is. That's not the main issue. I've never had a seizure. Yet! Have you talked to Josie about the possibility? Yes. She says she doesn't care. Do you believe her? Yes. It took some courage to tell her. It was pretty hard for me. Are we okay then? <laughs> Not so fast. I'm willing to accept that you love Josie and want her to be happy. Will she be happy? Can you take care of her? I've been thinking on that all day. I've got a plan figured out. I'm familiar with your situation. You need a record-breaking harvest to be solvent. What's your plan? You can look at this. It's my dad's account book. The bill at the co-op will automatically be subtracted from the potato sale, so it'll be paid, and I'm pretty sure there'll be enough to clear what I owe at the Merc. The undertaker has agreed to let me pay for my mother's burial as I go along, so that helps, and I still owe you some. What about all this mail on the table? Are there more bills? Uh, it shouldn't be anything new, just second and third notices. I just haven't gotten around to reading mail. I see. Will you have anything left to live on when you pay all you owe? Honestly, probably not. <sighs> We've never had much cash. We work like crazy to break even at the end of every harvest, and then we use credit to get through the next year. You're a good man, Rudd. But do you believe you can work harder on this farm than your father did? Well, Maybe I can work different. What do you mean? I need to have more than one cash crop. I could run some cattle on part of our land, and the fields need to be rotated, so when I get another section cleared, I can raise grain of some kind as well as potatoes. Good ideas, but they will take money to get started. Where will you get it? I don't know yet, but I'm working on it. And you think I'm working on it is good enough for my Josie? I thought that... When was the last time your mother had a new dress? I... But that's not fair. I don't remember. She didn't want new dresses. Maybe so, but she certainly deserved to get a new dress often enough that you might remember it. I can do it. I'll work hard. I'll take good care of Josie. Good intentions don't pay bills or buy dresses. Did new dresses make your wife happy? I didn't mean any disrespect, sir. It's an honest question. I'm trying to figure things out. I really want to make Josie happy. Please forgive me if I crossed a line. You crossed a line. I don't know anything. I shouldn't. Your honesty is... something. I'll give you that. Sir? New dresses didn't make Josie's mother happy. Tell me what to do. I don't know what to tell you. All I know is no one can make another person happy. I did everything I could think of. I loved her. I love her. So why let her go? Does that make any sense? I don't know what to say. I'm sorry I spoke out of turn. What now? I don't know. Sir, I promise I'll do everything I can think of for Josie. Can I have your permission to marry her? You have my permission. Great. Thank you. You have my permission as soon as you are out of debt. That seems fair to me. Oh, so if I get enough from the harvest to pay all my bills, we can get married on Friday? What's the rush? <laughs> Never mind. That was a stupid question. Yes, you can get married Friday if you are solvent. If not, you'll have to wait until you are. That's fair enough. Let's meet here Thursday night and I'll show you my accounts again. Good luck. I'm cheering for you. Which is probably a bigger surprise to me than it is to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's cross my bill off your list.
It was a week later, the Thursday before the wedding. Josie and her father were at the kitchen table. Then Percy came in. Any news? Are we going to have a wedding? Prices are supposed to be posted this afternoon, but Rudd isn't back from town yet. Oh, I don't think I'll ever eat another potato. <laughs> we must have filled a thousand wagon loads. Seventeen. That was Rudd's count on the last load. I hope prices are good. He's counting on it. What if prices aren't that good, Josie? I'm hoping for the best, but whether we get married tomorrow or later, it'll be okay. It's nice that the best year anyone can remember for potatoes came when Rudd needed money. Kind of restores your faith. If God was going to help Rudd out anyway, why did he wait so long to do it? Rudd deserves something to go his way for a change. What people get and what they deserve aren't always immediately connected. He loves this place. He loves being a farmer. Well, if it all goes the way you want, you'll be a farm wife next harvest, Josie. <laughs> That's quite a thought. It is. I can do it. I'll have to learn as I go, but I can do it. Have you heard from your mother? Not yet. Uh, she could still make it to the wedding, maybe, if she got our letter. Well, don't hurt yourself hoping. You'll at least have one parent at the wedding. <laughs> Here I am, supposedly all grown up, getting married myself, and I still want my mama. Rudd hopes to make the farm a success. I hope my mother comes to my wedding. What do you hope for, Percy? Me? Oh, I'm still looking for something to hope for, but don't worry about me. And hey, don't think so much about your mother. You've got an excellent father. <laughs> That's kind. Speaking of which, would you excuse us for a few minutes, Percy? This is a good chance for a father-daughter chat, I think. Certainly. I'll wait for Rudd outside. What is it, Dad? We've both had a hard time accepting what happened with your mother. What did happen? When your mother left, she told me it was final. She'd never come back. You, you never told me that. I tried to protect you at first, but I see that only raised false hopes. False hopes for you and for me. I got caught in the fantasy I created for you. Now, I alternate between wanting your mother to come home and fearing that she will come home. Why would you be afraid of mother coming home? I don't want her to hurt us again. She won't be at the wedding then, will she? No. No. You should figure out how to let go of her. I think I can. Now. Maybe not instantly, but I have you. I have read. I'm okay. You are more than okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. I was afraid this was going to be a talk about the wedding night. <laughs> I can give you that talk too. I <laughs> am a doctor after all. I don't think I could bear that, but thanks. I've looked at some of your medical books. <laughs> Maybe we should review a few of the main points. <laughs> Rudd! We've been waiting for you! Rudd's back! Prices are posted. Let's go inside and talk. Enough suspense already, Rudd. You're making me nervous. What's the news? Remember when we talked about supply and demand at school? You were listening. There were so many potatoes this year that prices fell to 11 cents a bushel. I ended up with $187. Not enough. For all that work? Not enough. The wedding is off. Delayed. Sorry. It's not your fault. It doesn't matter whose fault. I'm so sorry, Rudd. I could help out, invest in the farm, but I only have $50. You can have that, but it won't add up to make enough. Thanks, but like you said, it's not enough to make the difference. I've had a recent plague of not enough. There has to be a solution. I keep thinking that, but I don't know what it is. Josie, your dad made his point. I can't take care of you. I don't know if that will ever change. Well, I think it will change. But you two have to be patient. It might be hard, but it's all right to slow down plans a little bit. What are we going to do? You'll go home with your dad. You can finish school. That would be good. I'll stay here and work the farm. I'm no good at doing nothing. No, you're not. Uh, hey, you could read your mail. 
I see it's piling up. Here. Your co-op bill. Past due. No good news there. Something from the logging company. Another The letter. logging company? What is it? I don't know. You could open it and read it. I could. Dear Mr. Chandler, the Carlisle and Carlisle Logging Company extends our condolences to you on the death of your father. <laughs> like that helps. <laughs> I'll read it. You are listed as his beneficiary. Please find enclosed a check for $100, which is the amount of life insurance our company requires us to carry on all employees. <laughs> is a check in the envelope? Yes. $100. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to take my money. With it, your potato money and this, you have a little more than you owe. The wedding is back on. <laughs> I'll have to have our partnership written up formally. Whatever you want, we can do that. You get to keep your dirt. So I get the dirt and the girl. <laughs> Are you okay with that, Dr. Kreb? I am more than okay. Congratulations. Are you okay with that, Josie? <laughs> I am, I am, I am. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> Thank goodness. I was afraid I was going to get stuck with my wedding present. Here, Rudd. It looks like it's just for you, but it's really for both of you. Open it. What's this? It's my present. Cologne. Josie will swoon. <laughs> It'll make you smell good. Pretty, you mean? Like some big city dandy. <laughs> I spent good money on it. Use it. If you say so. I'll try it once. For you, Percy. <laughs> oh, Rudd, you smell delicious. See? <laughs> delicious? I have a wedding gift for you also, Rudd. You thought there was going to be a wedding? Oh, I hoped there would be. <laughs> That's all the gift I could ask for. <laughs> Here, open it. A suit. I've never had a new suit. I can't really accept shouldn't have. Uh, you're right. I shouldn't have. A one-week courtship doesn't deserve rewards. Has it only been one week? Seems like forever to me. <laughs> well, I hope it fits. It's off the rack at the Merc, like Josie's wedding dress. She has a new dress. I couldn't resist. Father's privilege. You can buy her the next one, but there's no rush. She has a cupboard full of clothes already. Thank you for the suit and the dress. <laughs> uh, Josie, Percy... I'd like a word with Rudd. Will you excuse us for a moment? Uh, sure. We'll go out on the porch. Dad, don't give him the third degree. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Rudd, Josie is smart and she's assertive, but she's also vulnerable. Her emotions are all over the place right now. I'm counting on you to be gentle with her. Sir? I mean in general, but I also mean tomorrow night, the wedding night. It's great to be eager, but... Oh, I don't... I mean... Well, of course, you can count on me. I'll do my best. Oh, that didn't sound... <laughs> Shoot. Can I hide under the table now? Oh, to be young again. I'm trusting you. Enough said. What's going on in there? Nothing. Nothing. We should go. We have a big day tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Percy, for your friendship and for investing in the farm. What about me? Thank you for believing in me. We all need to get on our way. Good night. Percy and the doctor walked to the gate. Josie! I love you no matter what. I love you no matter what. I can't wait for tomorrow. Me too. Goodbye. Hey... I won't have to say that again. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is a miracle. You are a miracle. I might not always believe in miracles, but I believe in you. Uh, let me help you with your coat. Thank you. <laughs> are you hungry? <laughs> Am I hungry? Is that your version of the language of romance? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm... Uh, I've thought about this moment a lot, but now that it's here, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, me too. Well? Well, uh, how does it feel to be financially solvent? I even have $12 left after I paid off everyone this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well... Here we are. Yes, we are. Home. Are you hungry? After all that pie? <laughs> uh, so, would you like to sit down? Thanks. I can... Have you... Oh, go ahead. No, you go first. Please. I think I'll take my suit off. I don't want it to get all wrinkled. Good idea. Rudd crossed to the alcove, modestly turned his back to Josie, and took off his jacket and shirt. He gathered up a towel, toothbrush, and the cologne that Percy gave him. You'll want to change, too. I'll wash up outside at the pump. That way you can have a little privacy. That there's a pitcher of water for you on the table by the bed and a clean towel. I'll put your bag on the bed. Uh, I'll wait outside. Uh, let me know when you're ready. Rudd moved her bag and went out to the pump, where he enthusiastically washed his face and brushed his teeth. Josie went to the door and looked out at Rudd. Rudd furtively applied some of the cologne, and then some more. Josie walked around the kitchen, ending up looking at the bed in the alcove. Rudd sat down on the porch to wait. Josie unbuttoned a button on her dress, but then buttoned it again. She went to the stove and poked at it, as if it was a strange creature. She picked up an apron that was still hanging by the stove and held it up. It didn't seem right. She was lost in thought for a moment. Then she put on her coat, picked up her bag, and stepped to the door. Rudd? What is it? I... What's wrong? Are you alright? Are you going someplace? I'm so sorry. I didn't think I would... What did I do? Tell me and I'll fix it. I'm sorry. Just don't... It's not you. What is it, then? Uh, tell me what to do. I'm afraid. Of me? No. Yes. A little. And... Afraid of me, afraid I shouldn't do this, afraid you're too good and that something will break inside me and I'll hurt you like Josie, my- Josie, listen to me. Your mother... You are not your mother. And it's not your fault that she left. It's not your fault. <laughs> hey, hey. You'll be alright. I trust you completely. Maybe you shouldn't. I don't trust me completely. I do. Look, I love you no matter what. <laughs> Remember, no matter what, you don't have to do anything you're not ready to do. What happens tonight is nobody's business but our own. This is just the start for us. We've got a future full of nights to be together. There's no rush. I can wait. It's not that. Not just that. What else? Can you tell me? I'm going to hurt you, and I hate myself, but I don't have a choice. Okay. I shouldn't have married you. I don't want to be married. I can't do it. But... We said we'd always be honest with each other, and I have to tell you the truth. I am telling you the truth. Don't want to be married. I didn't expect... You're right. I'm not like my mother. I'm like me. This is me, and I'm hurting you terribly. What do you want? Percy told me. You want me. Percy? No! No! Percy told me once to think big, 
to imagine big that I could do anything I want. And so this life here with me isn't big enough? I'm not enough? It's me, not you. I can't do this. I can't be a farm wife. I don't want to be a farm wife. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm so sorry. I'm sure. <laughs> Still love me, no matter what. Josie, you probably still do. Really pathetic. You just figured all this out. I wish I had figured it out yesterday. <laughs> me too. I won't, I can't force you to. I know. Thank you. <sighs> What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Not this. I'll go. It's late. You're exhausted. Wait till morning. I'll sleep upstairs. I'm not going to change my mind. Please, let's talk again in the morning. We can figure this out. This is not your fault, Rudd. I hope everything works out for you and the farm. You deserve everything good. I'm not part of everything good for you. Not part of anything good. I thought I was, but I'm not. Let's just talk in the morning. Things will look different then, okay? <laughs> it might help if you get angry. Help you or help me. Both? I don't think that's what I want to do. It would feel like I'm giving up. <sighs> well, figure it out. You need some rest. We both need some rest. Get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning, please. Okay? Okay. I'll try. Rudd watched Josie as she went into the alcove and closed the curtain. He slowly gathered his things and went upstairs. After a few moments, I saw Josie come out of the alcove with her bag. She closed the curtain and then silently left the house, headed back to town. The next morning, Rudd came downstairs and started breakfast, working quietly so as not to disturb Josie. When he set the table, he faced the two chairs away from the table, in prayer position. Percy entered through the gate and knocked on the door. What are you doing here? Can I come in? We aren't even up yet. I'm just getting breakfast ready. Josie's still sleeping. I just saw Josie in town. She had her bags. She said she's going to Boise to live with a cousin and finish high school. Rudd went to the alcove and opened the curtain to see the empty bed. What happened? She left. She left. She decided she had bigger dreams than being married to me. I don't believe that. There has to be some mistake. You two are meant for each other. Apparently not. No, it can't be over. It is over. Over. No doubt. You can patch things up. There isn't a patch big enough. She doesn't want this life. She doesn't want me. Doesn't make sense that I still want her, but I do. I won't try to hold her. You have to do something. Yeah, I can get an annulment if the marriage wasn't consummated, can't I? You're still in the celibates club? <laughs> yeah. I didn't need the reminder, but that's the least of my worries at the moment. Stop tapping your fingers. I'm sorry. I could take my money and start a new life somewhere. You don't have any money. You used it all to pay your bills. Oh, that's right. So I could get married. Maybe I can try something else. <laughs> Logging, maybe. <laughs> Sounds like a death wish to me. Besides, I own a percentage of this farm. You can't quit on me. You have to make it prosper. You own maybe 2%. I thought it would be more like 10%. Well... The percentage you own is the percentage of the work you have to do. Two percent sounds good. Even so, you have to keep the farm going. Maybe. 
I'm sure I can get an address. You could write to her. No, nope, not going to happen. I bet she will contact you. I can't believe she won't. She won't. You can't avoid this. You will see her again sometime. I honestly don't think so. I don't think she'll ever come back here. But her father... will be heartbroken. Probably even more than me. She will stay in touch with him, I'm sure. I hope he doesn't blame me. He's a good person. I thought Josie was a good person. I think she is. I hope she figures out what will make her happy. What about your happiness? Life... <clears throat> isn't harmless. No, but... I have to get over it and move on. Nice cliche. <laughs> if I had told you just get over it and move on, you'd pound my face. <laughs> yeah. But it helps me to say something simple-minded. It's also probably true. I just don't know how to do it yet. Get over her. My dad told me once that whether or not things worked out with Josie, I would win. I'm not seeing that. No. Well, I've got chores to do. I am a farmer, after all. You sure are. I don't think I've ever been as late as this morning. The animals will think I've deserted them. Uh, can I help? I've got that 2% to work <laughs> off. I don't think so today. That'll be okay. Can you... You want me to leave? Yeah. For right now. Okay. I'll check back later today. That would be good. Percy left. Rudd moved one of the chairs away. He stood at the table for a long time, staring at the one chair. I wondered what he was thinking, what he was feeling. <laughs> he lifted the chair high over the table. <laughs> Father in heaven, I, I've seen alone, I've looked alone in the face, eye to eye, please help me find hope. Rudd was my great-grandfather. I have the gouge table and the mended chair. Oh, my great-grandmother's name was Isabel. You've been listening to a radio production of Rudd by Brent Hansen, directed by Robert Stoddard. The production engineer for this show was Daniel Goldhammer. Natalie Kelly was the stage manager. This production was mixed and mastered by Daniel Goldhammer with Natalie Kelly assisting. The assistant engineer was Preston Rodriguez. The assistant stage manager was Emily Thomas. Gracious Pack was the assistant to the director. The Foley artist was Tiara Comstock. The vocal coach was Amory Clough. Incidental music was composed by Robert Stoddard. Tonight's cast included... Lane McPherson. I played Rudd. Melinda Lobdell. I played Josie. I'm Jared Matson, and I played Percy. I'm Aaron Bone, and I played the father. I'm Aubrey Goldhammer, and I played the mother. I'm Stephen Ewan, and I played Dr. Krebs. And I'm Gabrielle Atwood. I was the narrator. This has been a Southern Virginia University Theater production.